friendly neighborhood immunologist here, and today's video is about natural killer cells. They are potentially the most unique immune cell in your body. They act both like an innate immune cell and an adaptive immune cell, and I'll tell you what that means in a minute. They are one of the most important immune cells to fight viruses and cancer. So I will tell you the top five ways that natural killer cells uh, fight for you in your body, and then we'll talk a little bit about what happens when you are natural killer cell deficient. So let's get started. Now you might be wondering why we're starting with the word hematopoiesis. So this giant word basically means all of your blood cells, the white blood cells and the red blood cells, come from your bone, inside of your bone marrow, and they come from something called a hematopoietic stem cell. So yes, you refresh all of your red and white blood cells from inside your bone marrow specifically the red bone marrow. Now, a hematopoietic stem cell can create any cell it wants, but it usually gets broken down into two different types of stem cells, the common myeloid progenitor and the common lymphoid progenitor. And I'm telling you this for a special reason, because natural killer cells are sort of in the middle here. Common myeloid progenitors give rise to innate immune cells like macrophages meaning that they run off of a pretty basic program that we all share. They also give rise to red blood cells, as well as other innate immune cells like neutrophils. And again, all these are pretty basic. They don't have memory. They don't live very long, you know, between 20 days and several months. Now, the common lymphoid progenitor gives rise to natural killer cells. And that matters because the only other two cells here are B cells and T cells. And B cells and T cells are your longest lived immune cells. They have memory, B cells make antibodies for you, and T cells are basically your generals that tell all the other immune cells what to do. So here you can see that natural killer cells are more related to B cells and T cells because all three of these cell types have interactions with name tags. And by name tag, I mean a large molecule that makes you unique. It's pretty much as unique as your fingerprint. All right, so now we can finally talk about natural killer cells. Let me adjust this a little bit so we can see both cells here. All right, here is our natural killer cell. It's going to interact with both a healthy cell and an unhealthy cell. So let's see here, normal cell on the blue cell, and then abnormal cell. Uh, I'll draw that on the gray cell. Now it's amazing, but the natural killer cell can very quickly tell what belongs to you and what doesn't. Okay, now how does it do that? I have color coded a little bit here so that the natural killer cell receptor is going to bind to the other yellow receptor on the normal cell. This interaction is the first interaction, and the receptor is called the killer inhibitory receptor. And it's called that because as long as you have a name tag that says, I belong to you, the natural killer cell will pretty much leave the cell alone. It's a pretty strict bouncer here. So, if the killer inhibitory receptor in yellow binds an MHC complex 1 that belongs to you in yellow, it's going to go ahead and be safe. It's going to get a safe signal. Uh, books often abbreviate the killer inhibitory receptor as KIR, and then I'll go ahead and draw out what's yellow on the normal cell. Major histocompatibility complex 1. This is your name tag. And all of ours are pretty unique. Some people share enough in common to be able to transplant tissue one to one another, but typically it's pretty unique. So number two, let's look at the orange receptors here. This is the killer activating receptor. So if this is present, the natural killer cell gets a signal to destroy and kill, which it is very, very good at. But if signal 1 is there and signal 2 is there, often the killer inhibitory receptor wins and says, this cell belongs to you. I see the name tag. And so this cell is marked as safe from the natural killer cell. 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens in the second situation. I do want to mention in orange here that the killer activating receptor is something called the ubiquitous molecule. Now, a ubiquitous molecule is exactly what the name means. It could be a number of things. I think researchers have found at least 40 at this point. So just about any cell is going to have one. All right, so now let's check out the natural killer cell doing what it needs to do. It's coming by and doing a cellular check on the abnormal cell. So what could have caused the cell to become abnormal? Top choices are viruses, so a viral infection, if a virus gets in a cell, it tries to convince your cell to hide its MHC class one. If a cancer cell happens, it'll also try to hide its MHC class one because that will attract the attention of the immune system, particularly your T cells. So this one has no MHC. So what does that scenario look like? Number one, the killer inhibitory receptor, that's not activated. We got a big old X mark. However, look at signal two. Signal two is the killer activating receptor, and that gets a big old check mark, because you can see here, it's going to be activated. Now, this cell is going to be signaled for destruction from the natural killer cell, which means I can tell you the top five ways that the natural killer cell is going to kill this abnormal cell. I'm just gonna scoot that up a little bit. Okay. All right, so it starts off with number one. Number one is a substance called perforin. Perforin does what it sounds like. It perforates something, meaning it's going to punch a hole in the abnormal cell wall. And if holes happen in your cells, it basically spells death because all of the contents in your cell will start spilling out, just like if you poked a water balloon with a pin. All right, so I'm going to color code the perforin for you and it's gonna be this magenta color. And I drew it on the outside of the cell so it, it gets released from the natural killer cell and interacts with the abnormal cell forming holes. Now perforin has a more or less a cellular friend called granzyme and they're often released together. So as I mentioned, perforin is basically like punching holes in a water balloon and it comes with granzyme going to draw granzyme as a smaller circle. That's just how it's often drawn in textbooks. And what this does is it activates cell death. So just in case you thought the water leaking out of the balloon wasn't enough, granzyme is going to activate the cellular scissors. All right, so I'll show you what that means. Perforin punches the holes, then granzyme can enter through the holes and gain access to the inside of the cell. And when it's inside the cell, it's going to activate the cellular scissors. So they're known as caspases. And if you want a deep dive into cellular death, I can do that in the future. Uh, but here I can just tell you that it typically activates caspase eight. Here we go. I'm going to draw some scissors for you. Um, just so you can imagine granzyme running around and activating caspases and caspases are going to basically cut apart DNA, RNA, and protein, which means that everything in your cell is fair game and it will all get sliced to pieces. And once the DNA has been cut or injured enough, the cell will definitely undergo cell death or apoptosis and die. Now you think perforin and granzyme are enough, but wait, there's more. The third mechanism of death is here in gray. It's called FAS, FAS ligand. And all that means is it's yet another key to the cellular death here. It actually starts something called a death cascade. Um, again, just really hitting home how naturally, they good, how naturally good they are at killing. All right, FAS ligand is going to also activate cellular death. If the gray receptor on the natural killer cell binds the FAS receptor in gray on the abnormal cell, and it activates a very similar death cascade like the scissors. Lastly, there are two cytokines. Cytokines are immune products that they use to communicate to one another and your normal tissue cells. Now, TNF-alpha actually belongs to a similar family um, as the FAS ligand. 
In fact, it's a very similar related receptor, and TNF-alpha will bind to something that looks pretty similar to the FAST receptor as well, and kickstart the caspases. Sensing a theme here, which will run around and cut the DNA, RNA, and protein into shreds. So here's some more scissors for you just to drive that home, cutting apart all sorts of things in the cell. All right, now number five is not directly killing. I know, it's shocking. There are four ways of directly killing abnormal cells, and then there's an indirect way. So number five is another cytokine. This is called interferon gamma, if you've been reading at all about um, HIV or different types of virus treatment, you might see interferon gamma come up. It basically boosts immune cells. So this one is more of a helper function, a lot like those helper T cells, and it's going to boost immune cells like macrophages. And then macrophages are better able to kill virus, either externally or internally. So one last thing about CD8 T cells, they can only kill cancer and virus as long as that yellow MHC class one is there. So the CD8 T cell could easily take down the blue cell, but if it tried to interact with the gray cell, there would be no MHC class one. It's essentially cloaked and invisible to the CD8 T cell. So natural killer cells are essential to fill in the gap in the immune system. All right, I hope you understand the top five ways that natural killer cells fight for you. They're amazing at getting rid of cancer cells that are trying to hide from your other immune cells like CD8 T cells. They're amazing at trying to get rid of viruses, particularly DNA viruses that like to hide in the nucleus because those are the types of viruses that try to put on that, you know, cloak, that defensive shield and hide their name tag, hide their MHC class one molecule. So natural killer cells really are the best friend sidekick to the CD8 T cells. They are Robin and Batman and they need each other. So if you don't have natural killer cells, there's 40 different types of um, different diseases that involve natural killer cells. Some of them are mild, some of them are very severe. So if a person lacked all natural killer cells, they would be immune deficient. If they just lacked the natural killer cells, certain functions, they would be uh, mildly immune deficient. There are people who have the complete absence of natural killer cells, and often they present with severe viral infections throughout their entire life, particularly um, the ones that belong to the herpes virus family. So that includes um, the Epstein-Barr virus, in fact, the chickenpox virus. And again, as I mentioned, a lot of the DNA viruses are able to live in your cells and hide their MHC class one from the CD8 T cells. And so if you lack natural killer cells, then unfortunately you're more likely to have severe viral infections throughout your lifetime. Uh, the other thing is that cancer cells that hide their MHC class one, you will also have trouble fighting them off, but you do have CD4 T cells, you have all of your other immune cells and, you know, with proper medical care, generally you can have a completely normal life. But yeah, natural killer cells are amazing and important, and they span the innate and adaptive immune system. And as more research comes out, we learn more and more about their functions. All right, that's it for today. Uh, stay healthy.